Hello, everybody. Welcome back. As you can see here, as I've said, we knew this was going to happen. We knew we were going to be under attack. I don't know if this is probably should be quoted to Gandhi or not. People say he didn't say it. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Everybody should know the saying. First, they ignore you. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you. And then you win. This is a fight. We're in the fighting stage right now. Heard the book, The Fourth Turning. If you listen to um, Ray Dalio and his book about the rise and fall of dynasties and all that kind of stuff, you understand that they're in the fight phase and they're going to fight hard. This is going to be a brutal, nasty fight. At the end of the day, they are going to lose, but it's going to be a lot of casualties and collateral damage along the way. So right now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because now there are some crypto bills coming in. They're trying to pick put into U.S. law that are being put um, forth right now in the different houses and something that has to do with DeFi. So right now we have this wonderful guy, this wonderful Senator Jack Reed, who's sponsoring a crypto bill right now. And of course, it's about what do you, what do you think? Huh? KYC and anti-money laundering. Every time they try to push the narrative when they're trying to go against their legacy fiat system, what do they talk about? Money laundering and KYC. The biggest money laundering and KYC in the world is the U.S. dollar, the paper fiat U.S. dollar is laundered more than anything else because it's untraceable. But all of a sudden, anti-money laundering is such a big deal now in crypto, and it's all the requirements that we need for decentralized finance, a.k.a. all the money that's backing him and backing everybody else from the legacy system and all the money that goes into lobbying and all the money that goes into feeding them and keeping them in power. These guys are old boomers. These are boomers who should not be in power anymore. And what are they doing? They're now talking about they want to have some stuff about DeFi, decentralized finance. I mean, this is absolutely, this is just ridiculous, okay? So the whole thing here, some people are saying, lying groups are slamming this legislation right now. We do need people protecting us and working for our side, saying the whole thing's unworkable, it's messy, and it's unconstitutional way of regulating DeFi. But these guys don't matter because they, they only respond to the elites and the big money who keep them in power and the banks and the lobbies and all that kind of money so let's look at this guy here for a second i'm going to go to so jack reed right so we have jack reed here again same thing bipartisan bill used to regulate DeFi. right now it's introduced in the senate they're requiring sanctions the bill was subject DeFi to the same requirements as other financial companies now this, now this is very very important okay including centralized crypto trading platforms casinos and even pawn shops of course how they're putting it but the proposal would make anyone who controls that particular DeFi project liable for the use of any of the DeFi services by the san other sanctions persons. So what they're trying to say is, of course, we know like um, Celsius right now, right? With uh, Mashinsky and that, he got arrested and, and there's some of the Ponzi schemes. And we get that. But the biggest Ponzi scheme ever known to man was um, Bernie Madoff. And that was Wall Street and that big Ponzi scheme and that big fraud, Monday laundering, everything else that's fraud out there going on. But what happens? The SEC actually got numerous, numerous, numerous tips about Bernie Madoff for years, and they ignored it because it didn't matter for the narrative because Wall Street didn't care. This is a big Wall Street thing. They were hoping something, you know, they wouldn't blow up in their faces, just like what happened with SBF and FTX. Can I wait till that trial starts? Um, to see what happens there with Gensler and all of that. But they are they don't care because that is their big money fiat fake elite system. Okay. They don't want us regular people to have something for us. So, of course, every time it, it, it attacks or puts a possible um, fear into them of attacking or taking away or replacing their fiat system, they're going to attack it and come after us. And now, of course, the, the eyes and the target right now looks to be on DeFi. So let's take a quick look here before we wrap this up into who this um, senator is and who is, um, what's his name here, uh, Mr. Jack Reed. So Mr. Jack Reed here is a politician from Rhode Island. Um, he's a boomer. He was born in 1949. Guys, no idea about technology or crypto, any of that kind of stuff, I guarantee you. But the biggest thing here is that he was elected as a state senator back in 1984, Okay. He was elected in 1990 to the U.S. House of Reps. So this guy's never held a real job in his entire life. Okay, let's put it to that way. These career politicians. Elected in 1984, 40 years ago, to the state senate. Then he served at the U.S. House of Reps in 1990. And he has been a U.S. senator since 1996. By the time he's up for election, again, will have been 30 years as a senator and over 40 years serving in political, basically bought off, um, owned by the elites and lobbyists 
who never had a real job his entire life. But this guy's going to tell us, of course, what to do. So what do you think is going to happen? Who runs him, right? So let's see here. Who is actually giving him the most money for his campaign? Now, this guy ran. Let's see if it shows it here. Hold on a second. Let me find this. So look at these two last results here. I'm going to cover real quick here, okay? So he ran for a fourth term. He ran um, unopposed. So Republican opponents, he's a Democrat. I'm sorry again, I got to keep in this politics here, and I really hate the fact that I'm painting this picture because, again, I don't care about either side. Independent, I do not have a party affiliation, but these things just keep coming up over and over. So he's a Democrat. A lot of the Democrats are owned, and basically they do whatever the big banking, big. they're all about banking and big banking and fiat. That's 100% what controls these guys and the money that comes in. So let me show you this here. He ran for a fourth term in 2014. He um, ran by public opponents. He beat him by margins of 29 and 65%. He was unopposed in the Democratic primary. And he won by a landslide, another landslide, again, 71 to 29%. So he's winning by these huge landslides in a tiny, tiny, tiny little Rhode Island, if you don't know how big Rhode Island is. Then in 2020, he ran for a fifth term when the Democratic primary unopposed general election. And he won yet by another landslide, 67 to 33%. So he's winning by these huge landslides in a tiny, tiny little place um, in a little state of Rhode Island, which is extremely small. If you don't know what Rhode Island looks like on a map, look it up. Um, but let's look here. So someone who's so small, let's look at the top people who gave him money here. So from 2017 to 2022, he raised $4 million and spent $3.7 million. How do you spend $3.7 million in a campaign where you're winning by landslides in a tiny little Rhode Island for state senator to be in for like your fifth, sixth, whatever gazillion damn terms. Does it not raise eyebrows to people of how much money he's raised? And who's top contributors? These are top individual contributors, Raytheon. So, you know, defense, L3 Harris, defense, defense. So I get that stuff. But look, leadership pack. What does that mean? What is a leadership pack? 346,000. Does that mean doing what the elites say and the lobbyists? Is that what leadership pack means? Lawyers and law firms are the next biggest one. Miscellaneous defense, securities and investments, aka banking and Wall Street and the fiat legacy system, and real estate, 184,000, which is another legacy system. So you got to understand here what he's raising, what he's got for that tiny little thing. And he all of a sudden is bringing forward this bill that you know the lobbies bought him off and paid him off for. So we have to stop letting these guys, they're going to come, they're going to attack us, but at the end of the day, they are not going to win. We have to keep fighting. We have to keep staying vigilant here. Keep keeping our money in self-sovereignty. Keep having your large, you want to do DeFi? We all do DeFi. I'm in DeFi. We're in different projects. I'm leaning more now towards more traditional, better DeFi than the crap that was out there we've done in the past. I'm leaving that crap behind. That's all garbage. Um, so some of these dApps and these ROI things are garbage. That's not DeFi. But real DeFi, real decentralized finance, the stuff that we need that's important for us, as well as top coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, even now with some of XRP and some of the top holdings, they're going to help provide us for our future. So I hope you found value here. Do me a favor. I, I need your guys' help. Okay, Give me some likes. I need people who you haven't subscribed and you're watching, subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Let's get this out to more people to understand how important this is, because at the end of the day, we are going to win. OK, so I wish you the best. Hope you guys have a great extended weekend as I'm not going to be available. I'll be on my Telegram groups. So you want to join the link below the Telegram. I'll chat when I can I have some family outing stuff to do here as we're wrapping up the summer. But as always, here is to your success.